Maxwell, and I'm a museum fellow at the Francis Willard House Museum. Every December, we use archival photos from Willard's lifetime to decorate the house with festive and historically accurate evergreens, presents, and a Christmas tree. We remain closed to visitors due to the pandemic, but there is another way to glimpse what the holiday season was like for Willard, her family, and her friends. In January 1888, Willard wrote a holiday message for the Union Signal, the official periodical of the National WCTU, in which she described the Christmas and New Year's festivities at Rest Cottage. For Willard and her co-workers, the holidays were not a time for rest and relaxation. They continued to work determinedly through the week. They did, however, take a few moments to reconnect with one another, reflect on the past, and make resolutions for the future. Willard began her holiday greeting with a nostalgic musing on the passage of time. 83 Christmases have come to Mother, and 48 to me. We have sped along the mileposts of years beyond our nearest comrades and are still here. She referred to her father, brother, and sister, all of whom had passed away, writing, Of the happy five, two of us linger with the minority, and though no longer jovial-hearted, we are blessedly content to await the unfoldings of time and of eternity. Frances Willard's friend and sister-in-law, Mary Bannister Willard, had lived in the annex attached to Rest Cottage with her daughters, but the family recently moved to Germany. Willard listed the many new pleasant neighbors who had taken up residence in the annex. They were all WCTU workers, including the corresponding secretary of the Illinois WCTU, the associate editor of the Union Signal, the businesswoman of the Women's Temperance Publishing Association, as well as secretaries and stenographers. Willard mentioned two young Swedish women who were at the head of the Interior Department. Last but not least was Anna Gordon, Willard's close friend and personal secretary. The Anna Gordon beside me is the rest cottage balance wheel goes without saying. So here we are in good heart for a week of holidays, Willard announced. Hypothetically, at least, though the fact is that except for a day or so, we have worked like beavers, just because we are so subtle to it that how to leave off, we find not. Some of the women workers sped out for a day or so to see friends and relatives, but in the main we have stayed by the stuff behind our fortress of elms and evergreens. On Christmas Day, all the pretty things were displayed on a large library table over in the annex. Mother and I were up in my den when we heard bells ringing, a drum beating for dear life, with triangle thrown in. And going downstairs, we found our folks marching through the halls in procession. Anna Gordon was decked out with every temperance pin and badge in the house, wearing the emblem of the World WCTU, a bunch of artificial water lilies in her hair, and a white ribbon sash around her waist. Most conspicuous of all, she wore the ribbon of the Loyal Temperance Legion, the WCTU's children's group, to which she is devoted. Once everyone in the house was assembled, they distributed presents, with one of the WCTU workers calling off the cards that revealed what was what upon the groaning table. From her mother, Willard received Lippincott's Pronouncing Biographical Dictionary, a book designed to help teachers and public speakers correctly pronounce the names of historical figures and prominent people from around the world. The household then gathered around the dining table for refreshments. Each woman recounted the story of how she became involved in the temperance movement. They recited the woman's crusade psalm and sang hymns. On Christmas night, Willard spoke at the first service of the recently dedicated Hemingway Methodist Episcopal Church in South Evanston. A few church gatherings and WCTU meetings formed the only variations from steady pen work at our desks during the holiday week. New Year's Day marked the arrival at Rest Cottage of Mary Allen West, a teacher from Galesburg, Illinois, an active worker for the state, national, and world WCTU, and a sort of second daughter to Willard's mother. During the afternoon, the group went to hear an excellent temperance address at Union Hall. And on New Year's night, they convened once more in the large homeroom of Rest Cottage Annex. There, Willard told her friends and mother of two resolutions I had formed, that I would try to be more careful about money, and that as I had to weigh and analyze many people to know if they were fitted for the work, 
I had resolved to have this motto, before dismissing any person's case or character, let something good be said. Always something good. We all agreed to this for the next year. Willard would have this motto, a quote from poet James Whitcomb Riley, inscribed on the fireplace in her den. They rounded out the night by singing each guest's favorite hymns and praying for our comrades in all nations and everybody in our own familiar town. They greeted one another with a holy kiss, and with that, the Rest Cottage holidays were over.